Good afternoon. Um, uh, welcome to this Digimap Data in QGIS webinar. First of all, uh, this is what we're going to cover today, what data is available from Digimap, uh, how to use the data download to get the data specifically for QGIS, including what formats to pick. And then we're going to show you how to load that data into QGIS and how to style it as well. Uh, we'll cover a few basic tools um, on, on doing some spatial analysis. And right at the very end, uh, we'll have a quick look at some of the extras uh, from QGIS, like the, the plugins for extra functionality. So first of all, um, getting data for using in QGIS. You first need to go, um, well, first of all, we have data available from Digimap in the OS Historic Geology um, Marine and Environment Collections. And all, all the data can be used in QGIS in, in one form or another. So we'll have a look at those. Uh, first of all, each collection has a uh, data download facility. So we're looking at the Ordnance Surveys data download facility here. Uh, and if you click on that, you, you go in and use this uh, simple three-step process of selecting your area, choosing the data types from the left-hand side that you want to take, and then adding, the bar adding these data products to your basket. And it's once they're in the basket that you get to uh, specify things like the format that affect which um, software it's the most useful in. So um, lots of different data types within data download. Here we're looking again at the Ordnance Survey. So we have master map, which is a really detailed data, backdrop mapping, uh, and this is raster data sets that are uh, in TIFF format. Uh, and we'll look at those a little later and how to add them. Uh, land and height data, digital terrain models or contours, um, vector data sets, um, so in a range of different scales. And then we've also got boundary and location data. Uh, boundaries are vector data sets, but some of the location data comes as um, in CSV format. So once you're in the basket, um, a lot of data sets, not all of them, have this choice uh, of format. And this is where it, it's um, quite important to, to make the selection right so that you get the right data for using in QGIS. So the options vary between different map products, but there's always an option that will work in, in QGIS. So which format should you use? Um, Shapefile is the easiest format to use in, in QGIS. Uh, it's the same with most GIS software. Um, but uh, also file geodatabase works in, um, in QGIS as well. Uh, it's sort of maybe better known as, a, as a, an ESRI format for ArcGIS, but uh, the, um, the file geodatabases we produce at Adena are of, of the open file geodatabase standard, so they will open in QGIS. And also GML data will open uh, if, if needed in QGIS or can be converted. For raster data, there's the TIFFs, um, but for the digital terrain model rasters, there's, there's the ASC format, and they will uh, all open in QGIS. So uh, availability of shapefiles, um, most of the vector formats, uh, yeah, all the vector formats now allow you to take the shape format except um, the, the master map, but they're a little bit different because um, file sizes prohibit shape files, so we have to use the file geo databases. Um, the most up-to-date contour layers, the terrain 5 and terrain 50, are also available in shapefile. Um, what does a shapefile look like? Well, we call it a shape file, but it's actually made up of many component files. So um, these all need to be kept in the same location and have the same name for the shape file to work. Uh, unlike um, ArcGIS, where you get the Arc Catalog um, tool to rename and move shape files around, um, there isn't that, that sort of functionality with QGIS. Um, out of the box, so you uh, you have to be a bit more careful with your data and have a bit more of a mind for data management when working with QGIS. Um, the master map topography we mentioned that earlier, so we recommend that for QGIS we you take the file geo database format. Um, you can take the GML and then convert that to shapefile using the Interpose software from Dotted Eyes or the Ordnance Survey Translator plugin. That's a bit of an experimental plugin, but uh, it does work with, with the data you get from Digimap. 
Um, so the file geodatabase gives you the data ready to use in that in that format. Um, if you um, if you you can read GML natively into um, QGIS, but that can limit the actual feature types you can import, and um, it's much better to uh, to convert from the GML so you can merge different orders together. So that that may be the reason you want to take GML over file geodatabase. There is a um, you get file geodatabase in it. I think it's five kilometer square uh, tiles. Um, whereas if you take the GML order, you can process all the separate uh, tiles of data that you get in the download into a single into a single order. But you will end up with a shape file, which may be not what you you want if you're preferring the file geodatabase format. So. Um, a quick word on that Ordnance Survey Translator. It, it basically it creates shape files from your uh, GML data, and it can pro process multiple chunks, these tiles of, of data you get from the download process, uh, into a single um, layer to view in your GIS. Okay, so raster data. Um, most of the raster data sets we have in, in Digimap are in TIFF format. Some TIFFs are supplied with a TF. W file, so that's called a um, a world a world file that um, basically contains the information of where to locate the TIFFs in your GIS. So when you open up six uh, raster images from the same data set, they'll all align in the right place relative to each other. <clears throat> Some of the data we have in in uh, in Digimap actually has that embedded in the header of the TIFF file, and they're called GeoTIFFs. So they won't have world files, but will still um, align with each other nicely. And, and as mentioned before, the DTM and the grid of bathymetry data from Marine Digimap, they come as ASC files, uh, ASCII data essentially, but they still open nicely in QGIS. There's a, a, on this help page, these slides will be available, they'll be sent to you um, after the, the webinar's over at some point uh, in the next week, so you'll be able to pick up the link. But there is this um, a formats and conversion guide uh, in the Digimap help pages and that will show you which formats you can use and what converters work to uh, to um, get them into the right format for QGIS or any other options that you may have. Okay so once you've ordered the data you get a zip file with um, uh, a folder in for each of the different products you've ordered. There's also a contents uh, file that tells you all the different um, data products you've ordered and the, and the tiles that you've got for each of those. And there's also a citations text file as well, which um, gives you a line on that you can put into a paper or a, a, an essay that you might be write, writing that uses that data um, so that you can properly um, cite the, your, your use of the data. You need to extract the data from the zip file before you can use it in QGIS. Um, so you can either use the Windows built-in uncompress option or extract all, or you can use software like 7-zip or WinZip to extract the data from the zip file. Uh, most of the converters, um, because there is a problem with the master mapping that you get a zip file and within that there's a gzip file. 7-zip will unzip the gzip file, but most of the converters will actually um, like to read the gzip uh, uncompressed, uh, sorry, as a, in its compressed form. So it's often not good to unzip the gzip part of your master map order. Okay, so let's move on to QGIS itself. Um, first of all, getting QGIS, you download it from uh, the QGIS.org website, uh, and there is a download link, uh, download page on there. So you, it's available for both Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, machines. It's also available for Mac and Linux, um, something that's not, uh, not a native thing for ArcGIS, although you can run that on a, on a Mac or Linux that's running something like Parallels or a VirtualBox. Um, you'll notice that there's probably two different versions available on the website at any one time. Uh, they have a long-term release and a latest version. So the long-term releases, at the moment they're supported for a year, but they may extend that to two years with the next one. Um, they, so the long-term releases have very good help material, um, they're constantly updated with the bug fixes as well. Um, so, but yes, the help material is the main um, bonus uh, and 
people spend a lot more time and effort writing uh, the help for the long-term release because they know it's not going to change. But you're not going to have all the latest features of QGIS in that long-term release, so you'll have to get the latest version for that. And they're still updated with the bug fixes, um, but you might not have all the features um, as well documented in, in the help material. And sometimes some of those new features can cause problems, so they, it might not be quite as stable as the long-term release. But uh, the, the releases are very well controlled, so uh, you shouldn't have too many problems with either version. So once you've got QGIS on your machine, uh, you can open it up. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things you can do to set up uh, QGIS to make things easy for you. Uh, if the data that you're going to be using is all coming from Digimap, um, it's only the marine Digimap that provides uh, data that's not in British National Grid. So it can be quite good to go into the settings options bit there uh, and actually um, set your default coordinate reference system to be British National Grid. That time, every time you open QGIS, it's ready to go in, uh, in, in British National Grid. Um, select it from the drop down. There's always the option to filter. So you can just type in the EPSG code, which is 27700 for British National Grid. And that will uh, quickly filter that, that uh, coordinate reference system out uh, and allow you to select it. Um, saving the map, uh, map documents uh, saved in QGIS, they're just like the MXD documents from ArcGIS, so you're saving the instructions on styling, zoom levels, which data sets are actually in your map, but not the data itself. So um, if you went away uh, into, into Windows Explorer and deleted out a, a TIFF file, that would no longer appear in your map. So uh, again, think about your data management uh, and where you're storing your data, and don't do things in, in um, in Windows Explorer unless you're aware of what the consequences will be to your map. Another little uh, fairly recent feature, and when you open up QGIS you'll get a browser panel as well as um, as the, the layer panel for where you can uh, see the data you've added. In that browser panel you can right click on the favorites uh, tag and actually um, add the folder where all your data is to the favorites and then you can quite easily quickly drag files in and out of out of your fo folder rather than having to go through the adding process. But adding data via the uh, the add data buttons on the left hand side of the screen is actually the best way to do your you don't get confusion between the different types of data and um, you get to see all the appropriate options when you're adding the data rather than just dragging it in. So the three key um, add data buttons that you need to know about are the adding raster data, adding the vector data, and adding CSV data, that sort of information from a comma separator values file or a sort of like a spreadsheet data. So we'll go through those one by one. First of all, um, adding some raster data. This is a vector map district uh, example. Very simple to add raster data. You just click on the add raster button. Browse to where your data is. If you've got multiple tiles, you can use control or shift click to select multiple tiles at one time. And then you just click on the open button once the, it knows which ones to add, and they'll all appear in your map. So it couldn't, couldn't be simpler. Adding uh, shapefile data, so that's uh, vector data. You'll click on the add vector data button. And again, browse and locate your shapefile and click open, and it'll appear on the map. Uh, notice you can see on the map here we've added two um, contour line files to our map of Edinburgh uh, and they've come in in different colors and that's because there's no styling information stored within that shape file. Again vector data but this time file geodatabase data. So you click on the same same button and as I mentioned before the uh, the file geodatabase is, is, is in the open format so it can be read in QGIS as well as ArcGIS. Uh, this time, when you just uh, adding a shape file, you have the file button selected. You need to change that to directory to add um, a file to your database. And then the type of um, data you need to change to open file GDB. And then click open and, uh, and the layers will be added to your map. So this example, we've added the uh, master map building heights layer in file geodatabase format. We get this uh, provided as a CSV, but we actually have attached that to the master map topography buildings layer 
uh, and, and produced a filed year database so you can um, add the buildings ready to go. Uh, and again, it's just applied a random uh, color. So adding CSV data, a little bit more to think about here. You click on the uh, Add CSV Data button, browse to the location um, where your file name is at the top. Um, it will then automatically look at your data uh, and assess things like uh, which columns in that data set might be um, uh, spatial information. So this actually picked it up. This is um, a point, the CSV data for um, Edinburgh postcodes. Um, and so it actually automatically detected that the X field should be Eastings and the Y field should be Northings. Now this is the same similar process you'd use if you've got some attribute information, you've been and collected data from the field, it doesn't have any spatial reference in it, it doesn't matter, you can still add that, you just need to tick the no geometry option here and it will just add the, uh, the CSV file as a data table which you can then join to other spatial information if that's, if that's what you want to do. But if it does have geometry information, you can pick that up in the X field and Y field and then when you add the data, you click open, oops, um, it will automatically uh, display those points on the map. So uh, for those of you familiar with the process in ArcGIS there, you would add the, the data as a, as a table and then click on the add XY uh, button and it would give you the events layer. But slightly different in, um, in QGIS and it's sort of maybe a little bit more faff to get the data in, but it's in an You've, you've actually been through a more rigorous process and have a better understanding of, of what's happened in QGIS. Okay, so styling the vector data. As we've seen, those data layers have come in basically with no styling whatsoever. So it doesn't really look like a map, particularly if you've got lots of different layers uh, and you've got a whole mess of, of shaded polygons and lines. So you may want to consider um, styling the data to emphasize certain things on the map or to try and map ordnance surveys, cartographic style, for example. Um, what you need to do is double click on the layer you want to style and then open the styling tab. And you can see there's a whole load of different options that you've got in there. So you can basically change all the polygons to a, a color of your choosing. You can set layer transparent, transparencies and things like that. But also if you look up here at the top, the single symbol would, would color everything the same, but you can have categories, graduated, um, um, sliding scales of color based on values in the attribute data, um, rule-based things. So uh, if it's a, a feature type of A road, you can have, have it wider or a different color, loads of different options here. And this is where QGIS has really come on in the last few versions. It's, it's the cartographic power has, has greatly increased and you can see even there's two two and a half D uh, options and heat map options in here. And we'll have a look at that um, a bit later on. So this is actually, um, I applied a, the two and a half D style to the master map building heights. I selected, um, uh, you can select one of the columns in the attribute data to, to, it, to be the height of the building. And so I picked the, uh, one of the, the relative height options. Um, you can see the rendering isn't perfect. Um, it's uh, basically it's drawn some buildings in front of others that shouldn't but there are some other 3d options we'll look at later that, that can maybe do that do a better job but it certainly as a as a as a first attempt this is is quite a good way of, of viewing the data so style files you can actually download and implement um, styling from different sources uh, and certainly for the um, uh, the ordnance survey um, data. If you go where, where you can click on, in, in data download you can click on the info button for each of the uh, um, for each of the data products and there's a more info link there uh, and that takes you through to a help page about that product which has links to uh, symbology files. So where we created our own file geodatabase style for um, master map there is an Adena Digimap um, style file for both ArcGIS and QGIS that you can apply to that file geodatabase master map data. For most of the other products there are links through to the Ordnance Surveys um, styling files uh, and they, they've um, a very complete set for QGIS. Pretty much all of their vector data products have um, Q, 
QML or SLD files. QML is the QGIS specific styling file. SLD is, a, is an open data standard and will work in, in, in a lot of different GIS packages, but is, is maybe not quite as complete. So yes, get the QML files from, from the Ordnance Survey. Um, we also provide them in the download folder um, for the environment data. Um, so the only two data sets I don't think you can get um, pre-made styles for are the um, marine digimaps hydrospatial data and the geology um, shape files. Uh, we did create um, some SLD files for them, but unfortunately the BGS changed their, their schema in the data, so they don't work anymore. So we'll, hopefully we'll be able to provide these in the future. Okay, so you've got the data in there and you've uh, got it looking how you want it to look, but um, quite often there are a few tools that you, you'd maybe like to use. Um, as I mentioned before, the data from Digimap, a lot of it uh, comes on multiple tiles. So you may want to merge some of these together to make a, a, a complete data set, uh, work a single layer from, from several tiles. So um, there's two different ways of doing it, one for vector data and one for raster data. So the vector data here we've got, you can see on the left, a load of different contours, um, and we could merge those together. You need to go to the vector uh, toolbar in, in QGIS, down to data management tools, and there you can see there's the option to merge shapefiles to one. And there you would just list the shapefiles, and, um, and it would merge them into a, a new shapefile layer, which would cover the entire area. Raster data, slightly different. Um, there's, uh, in the raster menu, go down to miscellaneous and there's a merge option uh, and there you can see the various things. You list the different um, data um, layers that you want to merge together and, it, and specify an output layer. I've tried this today. Uh, it does seem to be a bit bad at preserving the color and the projection information of the new raster. So not too bad. It will go into the right place if you've got it set, your, your map project set up to be British National Grid. Um, but the, the, there's probably a plugin that would work better at merging raster tools than the one that's built into, uh, into QGIS. Either that or maybe play around with some of the options and see if you can uh, get it to do a better job. Clipping. Um, so sometimes when you download data from uh, Digimap, you end up with a huge 100 by 100 kilometer tile, and you actually are only interested in a small area in the middle. So again, there are two options, a vector and a raster option for clipping. Uh, if for vector, you go into the geoprocessing tools and select clip. Now for this to work, you're going to need a shape file that uh, basically defines the extent of the area you want to clip by. So if you have um, a one layer that's um, a, a sort of a 10 by 10 kilometer or 5 by 5 kilometer tile, you can use that to set the extent for, the, for clipping another data set. For raster data, there's the, uh, you go into the raster menu, extraction, and select clipper. That's a, the, a very good tool in there. Again, you can use a different uh, layer to set the extent, or you can actually just drag a box on screen, and it will chop out that section for you. So I've, I've mentioned a couple of times uh, plugins for um, QGIS, and uh, so these are sort of extra functionality. Some are installed by default, like the heat map plugin. Uh, others you access basically the plugin menu, and you can manage and install plugins from there. So we'll just run a few through a few of our favorites here at, uh, at Adina. Um, first of all, the Open Layers plugin. So with this installed, you can drag data off the internet uh, and just have that as your backdrop map. It comes in as a raster layer, but as you zoom through the different layers. Um, you'll get varying levels of detail because there's a sort of an extra, uh, each, each zoom layer is generated as, a, as, a, as a, a new raster layer from the data set online. So you can see we've got OpenStreetMap, Google Maps, Bing Maps, and then some of these, the, the OpenStreetMap stamen, this is the watercolor one in the background. So as you zoom in through this, you'll get more and more detail, road start appearance. It makes a very nice, pretty backdrop map, but you may be more interested in some of the aerial imagery from, from Bing or Google. Um, MMQGIS uh, is, a, is sort of like a bit of a Swiss army knife of a, of a plugin with lots of different things. Um, but the one that uh, I particularly like in this is the um, Create Grid Layer. 
And so you can create a hexagonal grid layer that you can put over your data, maybe for sampling or visualization of, uh, of point data sets. You can get QGIS to calculate the number of points within each polygon and give a count of those, which you can then uh, represent through color. So yeah, it's a great little tool, um, but definitely worth watch, looking at some of the other things in there. I think there's a, a merge for rasters in here as well in the combine section. Heat map, that's one of these standard uh, data sets that comes in. Basically on that style tab where I said you could see heat map with a point data set, what I've done here is represented the density of points, uh, weighted them by the number of, uh, this is postcode uh, centroids, and weighted them by the number of domestic delivery points. So you can see there we've got a heat map of Edinburgh where um, the sort of with basically showing the density of, of, of delivery points uh, within, within the city. Very quick and easy to do just apply the style, set a radius, set a color ramp, what's hot and what's cold, put a bit of transparency on it, and, and there you go. And finally, uh, sort of my current favorite plugin for QGIS is uh, QGIS to 3JS. So this basically allows you to create a uh, 3D scene from the data that you've got on the screen at the, at the, at the time. Um, you can have a backdrop DEM, so you can have the land surface and extrude things from, uh, from a surface. So um, basically you go in, you set up things, you put in things like a height value, a transparency for what you're extruding upwards. Uh, you can take these values from the map or, or set them in the, in the plugin. And then very quickly you can create a 3D scene such as this one. Uh, again, I used the file geodatabase building heights. It took a few minutes to set this up. And what gets sent to um, the, uh, well, what, what you get is, a, is, a, is basically a web page with a few extra folders, which you could package up and send to someone. And, and you can zoom, pan, and navigate around this, um, this little model. Um, it's basically set to the extent of your, your window, that your viewing window on, onto your data. Uh, and it's a very, very neat little plugin. Okay, so we're, we're, we're running out of time, so I'll just quickly mention um, the resources that we've got for Digimap. Um, if you go to the Digimap Resource Center, um, there's a whole load of different things, help pages, guides, FAQs, case studies, videos on how to do stuff, and, and a whole lot more. You can access it through the Digimap Resource Center link, which is top right of the interface. And there is a section in the GIS and CAD resources for QGIS. Uh, and we're just working on a whole load of um, sort of spatial analysis guides using um, Digimap data, doing spatial analysis on it. Uh, and they'll be up, put up there soon. Um, uh, we try and make sure that we can, at least with the GIS stuff, that it, you can do it in both ArcGIS and QGIS, uh, QGIS, just to sort of maintain balance. There's also in the learning and teaching zone working with GIS and CAD. So there's loads of stuff in there, including the webinar materials, loads of different exercises that you can download, sort of a PDF with a step-by-step -step guide, plus a load of data to, to actually do those exercises as well. And finally, uh, we've got a little chat window as well. So you can chat to us, uh, usually manned within the office hours. So you can come along and, and sort of chat live to us. Or equally, you can send us an email or, or ring us up, and we'll be able to help you with, with uh, Digimap data in QGIS. OK, so I'm finally going to just run a quick poll. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, type them in now. We'll try and get through as many as we can. I'll put this poll up on the pane. Uh, on the on the on the screen, so you can uh, just just um, uh, give us some feedback on today's webinar. Uh, and thank you very much for listening.